Good day, students. So I'm Teacher Onyx, your teacher science X in this lesson. I will be your guide on this educational learning experience. I'm passionate and really very excited about the lessons we're going to tackle today. I'm looking to share my knowledge and I want to impart my insights with you. So feel free to contribute your ideas and insights to remember the lessons about the previous work going to tackle in this session so there are no silly questions here only opportunities to learn more is it clear okay so before we start our lessons let's have first our prayer so let's bow our head and feel the presence of our lord dear lord and father of all thank you for today thank you for the ways in which you provide for us all for your protection and love we thank you Help us to focus our heart and mind now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen. Guide us by your internal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So again, good day, students. So. Before we proceed to our new lesson, let's take a moment to review what we've learned in our previous lesson. So, who can still remember to our previous topic? Anyone? Okay, so James, you're raising your hand. What is our previous topic? Okay, very good. So, our previous topic is about the reproduction of flowering plants. We all know that flowering plants is also called as angiosperms. Angiosperms or flowering plants is those plants that can bear or can produce flowers through pollination. And pollination is the process through which flowers reproduce, meaning they give birth to fruits and crops. Okay, so examples of flowering plants, lily, sunflower, lavender, daisy, and also hibiscus, and also known as simply known as gomamala. So, so much for that. So, before we proceed to our new lesson, please Lean your ears and read your eyes and order you to fully understand in our new topic. So to start with, let's have first an activity. So in our activity, you will be guessing the pictures that show a different kind of plants. And there's a hint word that also you need to complete in order to know what is the name of the plants. And your timer start now. Okay, finish. So, what you have observed to our activity? Anyone from the class? Okay, yes, Kimberly. What do you have observed to our activity? Yes, okay, very good. So, in our activity, there's a different kind of plants. A plant that could not bear flowers. And apparently, you are correct. So in our learning objectives for this lesson is you must be able to describe how non-flowering plants reproduce and to distinguish reproduction in a non-flowering plant. So now, what is a non-flowering plant? Okay, yes, Manuel, you're raising your head. What is non-flowering plants? Okay, very good. So non-flowering plants is those plants that could not bear flowers or cannot produce flowers. It's because they mainly produce using spores. The exception are gymnosperms that produce seeds but no flowers. 
and most non-flowering plants are non-vascular. So when we say non-vascular, it is a classification of plants that a lack of vascular system, specifically an asylum and a phloem that transports nutrients and water to the plant. So a good example of non-flowering plants or non-vascular plants are liverworts, moses and also the hornworts so these plants are the lack of roots stems and leaves in addition there are three types of non-flowering plants and the classification was based on the presence of roots the absence of roots and a base on their seeds spore bearing and naked seeds and the example of this is the moose or the moses. So how moses is reproduced? So moses have sexual and asexual bases in their life cycle. Characteristic of moses, it can grow in a moist areas like brick walls, forest floor, and also even in the side of trees. So it must grow close together for their life cycle. And in order you to fully understand, I have here to prepare a short video clip about the reproduction of non-flowering plants. So watch this. Plants are living organisms. Plants play a crucial role in ecosystem. They produce oxygen, which is essential for most life forms. They also serve as a primary food source and habitat for many animals. Plus, they contribute to the water cycle and help in soil conservation. There are main two types of plants, the flowering plants and the non-flowering plants. Flowering plants also called angiosperms. These are the most diverse group of land plants with about 300,000 species. As the name suggests, flowering plants produce flowers as their reproductive structures. Non-flowering plants, these plants do not produce flowers or seeds for reproduction. Instead, they produce via spores, division, or cones. Non-flowering plants include groups like ferns, moses, and liverworts. Ferns and moses reproduce using tiny unicellular spores. These spores are usually produced in specialized structures and released into the environment. When conditions are favorable, the spores germinate and glow into the new plants. Ferns reproduce through a process called alternation of generations, which involves both sexual and asexual reproduction. Ferns have a vegetative structure called a rhizome, which is an underground stem from the rhizome. Ferns produce fronds that are responsible for photosynthesis. A sexual reproduction in ferns occurs through the growth of specialized structures called spores on the other side of mature fronds. These spores are protected by structures called sporangia. When the sporangia are mature, they release spores into the environment. These spores are single cells that be dispersed by wind or water. If a spore lands in a suitable environment with sufficient moisture, it can germinate and develop into small, heart-shaped structures from the parent fern plant. This alternation of generations allows ferns to reproduce both sexually and asexually, increasing their chances of survival and dispersal. It's a fascinating process that has allowed ferns to thrive for millions of years. The importance of plants in our world cannot be overstated. They provide us with oxygen, regulate the climate, support ecosystems, nourish us, and contribute to the well-being of our planet. It is our responsibility to appreciate and protect our plant life, ensuring their survival for future generations. Let us recognize the invaluable rule of plants and work towards a sustainable future in harmony with nature. Okay, so I hope you have something learned today. So again, I'm Teacher Onyx, your teacher Science X, and I hope those information that you have learned, you keep it in your mind. Again, thank you for listening and participation.